subscribe. Do you see the left side of my desktop? <laughs> so that's the HG Condo workshop taking place in autumn 2024, 24 to 27th September. Excellent. You need to go there. So, excellent. So I inherited this live demo from Todd, who assured me that uh, the notebook that he would be able to show you would be even more lame than what I can show you. And, um, well, let's see. Um, what can we do? Uh, I need to come on here. So maybe it's not working, then it's coffee time right away. So that's the J-Hub uh, we are running. And so here I can choose the notebook. Let's take a medium one because that's reasonable. And then we can start it. And that takes a moment. If, if you could make the, the font, you know, control plus or whatever on your, your browser, just to make it a little larger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Hmm. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. So as you can see, we, we are waiting quite a bit and we just shifted all this to EL9 because this week we were migrating the whole pool to EL9. So we are running a new Python version, a new operating system version, a new Jupyter notebook version. So we were quite busy to, to get this all together. So and there we are. And um, most of the time is actually wasted or used, not by, by the condo job starting, but more uh, because we have our home in AFS. We need to get a token, then read the, read the home directory and put it here on the left. You will see my club at uh, home in a minute. And um, like every good admin, of course, I also have a root shell. Can you see that? Is it big enough? Yeah. Okay. So this is so this is uh, the scheduler who is no, this is the hub who is actually running the the notebook jobs, and you can see. Uh, it's a dedicated resource, the scheduler. So all jobs we see are actually uh, notebooks. And as I told you, we have small, medium, and large ones. So this user is running actually a large notebook. And uh, most of them are, maybe they didn't recognize that they could go for a bigger one, or they are just lucky with a 12 gigabyte memory notebook, which actually, if you just do regular work, uh, is sufficient. So. At the time, at, at this moment, we are not enforcing the time limit properly, but uh, because we just shifted all this to the to the new pool and we need to do some work on it. And uh, but these are actually the, the the active notebooks at this point in time. And here, and the last one is is me with my medium notebook, and um, it is running here. So typical greeting page and. Um, uh, I can tell you, I'm, when it comes to notebooks, I think I have the same problem as Todd. I'm not using them. So I, I provide them. And of course, I can I can show you some stuff, but uh, I'm not I'm not a regular user of notebooks. So I'm, I'm most of the times when I see scientists using them, I'm pretty amazed, but uh, that's about it. So I'm more like a well-meaning idiot in this. But uh, anyway, so the, the default kernel we provide is this Python 3 kernel. And uh, this is the not notebook starting up now. So the, the rest we see is the, the J-Hub. So this, this notebook is actually running the, the vanilla Python 3 IPI kernel that comes with this version of the notebook. And well, we can uh, I can show you how it more or less works with putting all my Python knowledge in. No, oh, look. So I can run this cell here and see right away what it does. It prints hello. So let's uh, let's go to a more sophisticated notebook. But before I have some slides somewhere. Um, 
from Bell. Don't worry, just a small couple of slides. Wait. So, as I told you in forehand, the uh, the Bell community was using notebooks for a long time. And uh, when they were approaching us to, to support them more and their, um, and their computing, it was clear to us that we need to, to run Jupyter notebooks for them. Otherwise, they couldn't work. So the, uh, the Bell community, or the, the Bell VO, and is in Japan, and they are uh, dedicated to neutrinos. There, as you might know, there are three types of neutrinos, and they are obsessed by the tau lepton for whatever reason. So the, uh, these uh, tau leptons have a, a, an amazingly short lifetime. It's 1.3, 10 minus 7 times of a muon lifetime. And uh, it flies with uh, nearly light, um, light speed. And it only travels 87 millimeters, so a very small distance. So if you want to catch one, uh, you don't have them in the drawer, in your desk drawer. So uh, you want to catch one, you need some, uh, you need some stuff behind it to just see them. So what Keck actually is doing, or Bell is doing, they run the Super Keck B, which is an uh, electron positron ring accelerator. They So they accelerate E minus and E plus uh, particles in, uh, in a ring, and then they collide them in some point there. And uh, they, has, they have asymmetric beam uh, energies. So the E plus a bit, uh, uh, have a bit less energy than the E minus. And uh, during the collisions, they um, they provide or they they produce uh, all three types of neutrinos actually. And um, well, what can I say? Um, Eight percent of them are actually tau leptons, and uh, that's the detector they use. It's it's not overly big. It's not like the LHC detectors. It's like I think it's seven meters in diameter or something like that. But it's also packed with technology and. Um, so some of the typical stuff they actually produce there is this um, these diagrams at the bottom of this uh, slide. They, they, they are usually done with a Jupyter notebook. And that's uh, one of these Jupyter notebooks I have at hand. And maybe we can get it to run even. So these more specialized notebooks, they come with a lot of dependencies and other programs and uh, libraries. So you you couldn't run this notebook from, from Bell in this uh, vanilla Python 3 IPI kernel. It, it wouldn't do. So what they, what they usually do is um, the VO provides a Git repository where you can down, download the all, all the files you need in this case for the tau measurement. And then they have a couple of notebooks in there. And here, this is, this is as Oliver mentioned already, they are heavily used for teaching also. So here we have the student notebooks, uh, eight of them. And then we have the solution notebooks. And I, uh, I rather go for the solution notebooks because otherwise we won't see much because then we need to edit some code and that's gonna be above my pay grade. So, Let's go for this one. I think it's uh, it's quite good. And uh, this is, as you see, we're running a different kernel now. It's the the Thomas Pi environment kernel. And um, the way this goes, um, we can execute every single cell in this notebook. So this, as usually, starts with some import of root, which is a, a popular program amongst physicists to to run analysis of data. Uh, pandas. It's it's a program to, yeah, to to scroll through data frames and make them accessible. And then we have the usual stuff like matplotlib and pyplot, numpy, uh, pretty regular stuff. So if you run that, um, you get some exercise explanations. So we define a data set. And here we could also um, name the plot, what not. And here we will reload the 
data we actually use. So this is so this is coming from Pandas. So we are currently, so the data is in a directory in my home. It's 20 gigabytes of uh, of super kek B uh, measurement data. So we start here with uh, row one, uh, row zero, and uh, we have 582,000 rows of this data that we actually process in this notebook. And that also is one of the reasons why we use a lot of memory. By the way, the the memory, uh, the, the the Python resource that would show us the memory consumption is not ready yet on this notebook because we just uh, switched everything to EL9. It's, it's currently not there, but uh, in the, the next version or uh, maybe next week, there should be a, a memory indicator here that would show us how many, how much memory we're actually consuming. So, so these are the data frames, assuming they should be okay. So we try to plot the data. We see the, the kernel here is, is busy. Going through the 500,000 rows. So this would be the the data, and um, as I said, I'm uh, I'm more like a well-meaning idiot when it comes to Jupyter notebooks already, but when it comes to physics, uh, even more. So I would assume the the mass is here, like 1.78 whatever giga electron volt per whatever. So so Christoph, what what yeah. would uh, what would happen if you go back to the hub, and end your session? You know, does it does the does the job leave the queue? Can you show uh, that or I mean, yeah, if I if I stop the kernel, yeah, the job will leave the queue. That's right. So um not if I stop the kernel, but if I um we can do that. Um we can go to the hub control panel. And that is actually here I can go to my server. Whatever happens now. Ah, now we're back in the, yeah, that's not what I wanted to show you. Wait, now we started the second one. Um, we can go to the hub control panel and then we can say, stop my server. And so now I hope this is still valid. Yeah, we should see that my job is uh, vanished. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, but very nice. So, That's so, exactly what users don't do. You know, they just log out and the notebook keeps running in the background, like Google Docs. You never shut down Google Docs because you can't. At least I don't know how to shut down Google Docs. You know what I mean? So in, in this terminology, uh, what is the server? Is the server the, what is my server? Is it the the, the current the notebook the, or yes, is the, it, it's the Jupyter Lab runtime? I, I, Jupyter Lab notebook server. What the heck? Are, you know, are, are all these things. So, uh, so I it's my server. Can I give it a name and have another server? Or do I have only one server in 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 existence? Yeah, so it is. Excuse me. If 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 I if I run in this and I did something and and you don't want me to keep my uh, my notebook or my server active, I may want to save it and then come back. But can I save different one? and then pick which one I want to come back to. So the the, the Jupyter Lab is the, the process is actually running on the worker node. And that is, um, you can only have one of them. So if, if you just log out and you log in again, the, the J-Hub, the, the, the front end will have a look if there is a running notebook 
from earlier and will reconnect you to exactly the same way you left. But you can run a lot of notebooks in, in one session. So I could uh, start dozens of notebooks here and they will all be synced all the time. So I don't need to save anything. It's um, I don't know if it's as even a save button. It's it's like Google Docs. Uh, you don't save a Google Doc because it's saving all the time. Oh, yeah, you can save, but you see it's grayed out. So um, you just log out and uh, if, if it stops, uh, it's no problem. Okay, so I, I have one server, and then I can pick the different notebooks that I want to yes. run uh, in the server. So when you say stop server, that means I return the, the capacity back to you. That's right. As, as, as a user. So so I, I start this because... I, the, the terminology here uh, is it, it's a challenge, I think, of how we present it to an end user who is not uh, fluent in all these uh, and, and doesn't care how it's being implemented. Okay. Uh, from, from my experience so far, uh, it's the other way around. The end users are totally into the terminology and they know everything. And me as an administrator, maybe because I'm an old fart, I don't know. I don't know much. <laughs> so they, mostly I ask them about the terminology and uh, not the other way around, but um, who knows? By the way, you also can have a, a, a nice uh, uh, console session. So you see we are running on the, on Batchyard 003, which is a dedicated batch worker node, because we are running a medium sized notebook. And um, yeah. Very, very nice. Thank you for the, the live demo, Christoph. Yeah. And, uh, and, and thank you for being brave to, yes. to run a demo live. <laughs> let's, let's give Christoph a hand. And if there's other questions, and I would uh, like to say- We, we do have some questions stuff. for you, Christoph. Oh, we have questions. Yes, go yes. ahead. Uh, a microphone is en route. Uh, okay, a uh, question from Joseph Arita online. Uh, is the web page code for the notebook job submission publicly available? Uh, yeah, it is mostly the the code that comes with, uh, with J-Hub. Uh, there's just a- very few couple of lines like the drop down is 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 individually done but uh yeah if you if you if you message me i can i can give it to you so it's it's we didn't publish it as such i think because it, it's really not very sophisticated uh, as long as i'm holding the microphone i have a question as well what happens if a user's notebook exceeds the uh memory uh, that they have allocated to it yeah that's that's a good question if uh, if if uh, condor in the background is uh, deciding that this is too much and is going to kill the condor job um then the, the the you will get a message here that the, that everything is dead we can uh, just try that uh, and just kill it Let's see what it does Now it's killed. Let's let's yeah. see what, what does it do. Not much. Yeah. So that it asks me does. if I <laughs> want to restart it. So I think if I if I restart it, then we will probably ah, and it redirects me to the hub, and there I can start a new one. And my suspicion is that this happened to some users on a regular base. <laughs> Because, well, I can, uh, of course, in the logs, I see when the notebook gets shut down. And um, yeah, so this. Uh...